<laughs> I'm sorry. It was supposed to be an easy step-by-step -step tutorial of how to create an icon from the silhouette that we did in the previous video, but it turned out to be completely different from what I meant it to be. But it's okay, because it turned out real nice. Hey everyone, it's David again, and this video is the continuation of a previous video in which I tried to explain why silhouettes are so important when you start your designs. And because we did a sword silhouette in the previous video, today we're gonna render it. But I don't want this to be a regular metal sword. I want this to be something cuter, like a wooden sword. So let's begin. So apparently I didn't save the previous file, so all my shape stuff are gone. But, but it's okay because we flattened it anyways. So let's begin with the blade and continue as we proceed. All these white lines, we won't need them. So basically we will cover the whole shape. So select the pen tool with P on the keyboard and just start tracing uh, whatever it is that you are doing. So for example, for me, it's this blade shape. Let's also give it some real wood color. So something in these areas. Okay, so it's, it needs to be a little bit more yellowish and here in this area. We're doing a game icon, so it needs to be a little bit more saturated. For now, let's just give it this color here. And the way I colored it is the way I do it in every other video that I have here on this channel. It's Alt, Shift and Backspace. It will color your uh, layer with any color that you have on your foreground color. So to proceed we will need to disable this layer because we have this uh, little thing here that's covering the blade part, right? Okay, and because it's a wooden sword, it's also fine if all the shapes won't be 100% accurate, not perfect shapes. Maybe we also can add a line here and another line here maybe as well. Let's give it a little bit darker color as if it's a different type of wood, even though this part goes on top of the handle. But still, let's disable it and create a new layer. And again, pen tool and now for this circle we're gonna select a circle the ellipse tool from our shape tools while keeping this shape selected you're gonna hit shift on the keyboard and you're gonna see this little plus icon you're gonna click and drag it until it covers whatever area that you want to add to your shape this is the color that we need okay so basically three wood colors Right now it works great for me. Okay, now we have these bindings that we did as well. Okay, so it's very simple. It's just some kind of rectangle like that and another one. Let's merge them together by selecting both layers and clicking Ctrl E or Command E if you use Mac. Okay, let's let's agree on this. I don't use Mac. My shortcuts are gonna be Control and Alt and you do you with Mac, it's okay, I simply don't like it. Okay, now when this is out of the window, let's change its bindings maybe to something brighter like this. Or we can also do it darker and we can also change the color a bit so it's not brown. This is the final product. <laughs> no, I'm joking. By the way, I didn't follow the shape because this handle should be on top of it. Looks a, a looks better, but you know what? It's like in real world it doesn't work like that. So I understand that the shape was different, but let's keep it like this. For the blade, I want it to be separated in half, not like I did in the sketch, but actually making you know just regular sword shape. We're gonna create another shape that's gonna do exactly that. Just make another shape. Create a clipping mask by holding Alt. You're gonna see this little icon. Click it. So now we can change the color of this half of the sword. Okay, cool. Yeah, works for me. This tip here, it's, it's too pointy. No way a wooden sword can have this pointy tip. Better now this section here as well. Okay. From practical perspective, I don't think we need to add these holes to this middle section because it's not gonna be that practical. I think what we can do with this sword to complicate things a lot, we can 
play with the angle because right now it's just a simple side view let's take all these shapes that we created and tilt them a little bit okay would help if i just disable this let's see which direction is better i think this one works okay something like that maybe and let's see okay to make it look to make it look as if it's uh, as if it's turned sideways we need to add some depth to the shapes right now we're gonna duplicate the blade part okay so let's duplicate it bring it to the left we need to see the difference right so let's make it a little bit brighter like that and now we need to connect this duplication that goes under the sword right to the main part that we have so that it looks actually connected so just create another point and drag it where it needs to be on the shape and here as well let's create another point here and drag it here now we can take this blade color and also maybe adjust it okay now for this middle part because we turned our sword a little bit sideways this also needs to move a little bit here and we should see what happens here in this area and of course in this one as well and you can duplicate it by ctrl j on the keyboard or by holding alt and dragging this layer under the layer that you want to duplicate it underneath so now drag it here this color can be a little bit darker take this shape here and duplicate it under the blade shape for reference okay this is approximately where we want this part to be like this here okay cool let's give it some opacity so that we see where we need to go and on this shape we're gonna add a bunch of dots to just go and place them where they need to be according to the guidelines of the shape that we copied and also here on the back side cool oh, of course of course we need to have some kind of connection here in this area like that and remember that we are actually complicating our lives right now so much and it's gonna look crazy for the handle disable the wraps because we're gonna do them later and do the same and there you have it let's adjust these connections here a little adjustment to the handle i think this little handle looks so cute i will just continue with it like that we need to deal with this edge here we need to have third strip of of wood here basically okay okay so create a new layer again uh, use the pencil and start creating this little line here so something like this now let's change the color to something bright brown color mm, now the same treatment for this middle section like that okay looks cool i guess okay yes 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 but here it's gonna be a little bit brighter than this side part so okay it's treated with proper shapes and understanding of colors and lights so it works here again the same thing so okay something like this now all the lines should be a bit more harsh so we will just create sharp transitions in between them so no hard edges but with a little transition like this okay so we have our base colors base shapes we have the sword tilted we did the transition edge on it so it's not that harsh what we need to do now is add some ambient shadows for this explanation let's have a simple sphere on the ground and the ambient shadows would be located in the parts that no light gets to okay so basically these little connections between elements and the way i do it is with a simple round brush with soft edges and some kind of shape deformation to it but it's still it's okay and basically you're just gonna hit it once and transform it a little bit make it a little bit bigger okay so here you have your first ambient shadow on the ground that the ball is casting and we need to have another one on the ball that the ground is casting like that and this is the ambient shadow we're done with the explanation let's go back to our sword let's go to the blade part here 
and create a new layer and with the soft brush let's just go over these parts here the color that we're gonna use is gonna be this brown color of the middle section here and we're gonna create this ambient shadows like that so don't worry to cast a little bit more or less we're gonna erase them as we see fit so no worries about it and of course this other blade part as well here we also gonna have it and also this shape here also gonna have some of it as well okay cool and here maybe we can erase it a tiny bit and a big brush stroke here like that with soft edges of course don't forget it's very important soft edges the same we're gonna do now for the handle part okay cool and of course this middle section on itself is gonna get some kind of ambient shadow let's add the shadows that would be created by having a light source in the scene so basically select the plane that you want to have some kind of shadow ctrl h hides the selection which is really helpful and then a little stroke of the rounded brush some areas needs to be harder some needs to be softer like that looks good to me i think here we can have much harder shadow something closer to this brown on the upper part looks much better just take this blur tool again with soft edge and just smear them a little bit to lose this hard edge that you have now let's have the same approach for this middle section some darker shadows here let's erase some of the shadows like that and it will give us this nice hard edge with this little transition here and again make a little pass on it like this and here as well the same principle we're gonna erase it and we're gonna have a little pass here let's create some harder shadows here in these areas like this cool and of course blur a little bit on these edges beautiful so listen, it was supposed to be a fast tutorial, but I just got carried away with the rendering. This icon here, well, it's not even an icon anymore, it's a, it's a 3D object now. It was done in a 2D software, which is really, really inefficient. But you know what? It turned out so nicely, so I don't complain. Now we're gonna have the same treatment of these shadows. Okay, in this side area, I think it needs to be this color here, maybe a little bit brighter. Now let's deal with this handle, the same treatment. So we're gonna have a hard shadow here on this part of the sword. Okay, something like this. Blur, but just a tiny bit like that. We want to have this upper part of this shadow brighter. Okay, cool. The reason that we don't have any shadows here on this area is because the whole area is in shadow. What we're gonna have though is some kind of reflective light on this part of it. So now we are basically done with the shadowed parts. At least I don't want to make any more shadows because it's already a big pain. Let's deal with the bounce lights. Okay, so basically if our light source... And you know what? Let's create this light source. This is our light. Okay, this is the direction the light is coming from. The light hits our object, but also hits the ground behind our object. And this ground reflects some of the light back on our object as well. And let's do just that. Because our light is warm, we're gonna have the bounce light warm as well. Create another layer and create a clipping mask of it. So round brush with zero hardness will give us this scattered light on our shape. And you see how far the brush is from the object. Because if I would do this, it's just too much. So it's very subtle. But I don't like it. I don't like this uh, yellow light, so I'm gonna make it a little bit more whiter, like this, you know, even lighter. Very nice. On this middle section as well, create a new layer, like that. But it's too much, you know. Let's move it around and see if it works better. I think so. Okay, cool. And now on this blade part, looks very nice. If you do it in Blender, you would be finished with it in like three minutes, maybe even less if you are very good and not in an hour and a half like I am right now. But still, you know, you learn every day something new, so you don't complain. All right, so where was I? All this blade color can be darker. Oh no, I like it brighter. 
like that. Okay, looking good. Um, what else can we do? All right, texture, wooden texture. Let's try to do it on the blade part. So create a new layer. The first clipped layer that we are gonna have. Round brush with hardness on 80 something, 90 something maybe. And just shrink it a bit, rotate it. And you should have something like this, okay? This kind of elliptical brush, okay? Just, you know, something that looks wooden. I'm not bothered by the color at all at the moment because we're gonna change it in a second. Let's even change it right now. It works, looks like a wooden texture. All right, great. On this side here as well, we need to have the continuation of this line, basically like that, really nice. We're almost done, but we're still left with this stupid wraps. Okay, look, I found a better way to show the layers so that uh, my camera is not blocking them and it's the end of the video so I'm sorry I'm sorry for this but it's, it's just how it is you know you learn every time something new so okay so now the bindings the wraps that we had and let's create one shape that's gonna cover them both so let's begin with with this shape here Maybe it can be darker red color. Yeah, something like that. Copy the same one, uh, but you know, let's change it to accompany the shape a little bit. I think it works great. Let's have a new layer with round brush, hardness to zero. Let's give it some highlight. So just a little pass highlighted color. Of course, we need to somehow show this line here. Okay, cool. Looks nice. And also here on this other part. And we're gonna have some shadows here. Just raise some of it here with a soft brush like that. And just like we had our highlight, let's also create some kind of shadow on this uh, bandages, straps or whatever you want to call it. Now let's erase a little bit from this hard shadow here to accompany the wrapping effect. Now let's group these folders and make this group normal and add some adjustment layer color balance. Okay, and make it a little bit redder like that. Yes, and add a little bit more yellow. Magenta makes nice reddish wood. Okay, cool, better. Like a real wood finish, you know. Maybe also levels, let's see. Yep, so my dear friends a real nice wooden sword that now you know how to make and now we're done okay so if you found this video helpful of course give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel i hope you learned something new for yourself if you did let me know and if you didn't let me know as well why not all right thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next one bye bye